Greetings, mortals. I am the Fallen Shogun, and welcome to another Who's That Indie? Being a strategic, tactical, and survival game straight to your face holes. Today's game is a tactical game. It's Warsaw, which is basically World War II Darkest Dungeon. Now, I've played a few hours of this, did a bit on the stream to test it, and I can tell you you should not buy this right now. Now, that makes it a bit extreme, but we're going to go talk about why in a second. But the game is hideously underbalanced. Hideously underbalanced. Like, there was a patch this morning, which is why I'm doing it after they told me to, where they've removed moved enemy squads from seven people to six, made the enemy have less health, given you more bullets, and made it so that you don't use as many bullets for your skills. So we'll talk about that now. But, yeah, the game is massively, massively... Underbalanced? Yeah, not overbalanced. Massively underbalanced. Like, the enemy is significantly stronger than you. So, like Darkest Dungeon, you could have four people. The enemy could have had seven people. And they've dropped it down to six. So, as far as I can tell, this game will become a very good game once the patches and balances have been sorted. But as of right now, I wouldn't touch it. Unless you really like being masochistic. So how it works is, you have multiple different people, as you can see, I have five heroes down here. I'm going to say heroes, because as far as I can tell, there are two tiers of people, and the other tier of people you don't actually care about. Which is what I found out now. So, it can be a bit complaining. I apologise. But yeah, there's two tiers of people, there's your heroes, and then there's your regulars. These heroes come along in an event, there's three down here, one over here is a kid, and one over here reading a book. Your heroes have skills, you can level them up with these which you get for winning and you can give them weaponry as you can see and you've got like a con edge okay got and you've got a couple of those and then there's your regular people you can recruit as you can see i can increase another one for 100 i have these two here which i can't click on they don't exist down here and you can't give them weaponry or equipment you get them and that's it so I don't know why they're there except to give you more cannon fodder. So you don't actually care if they live or die, because as far as I can tell, they don't upgrade, don't have weaponry. Why would you care if they live or die? So like, unlike Darkest Dungeon, only some of your characters level up and have equipment. The other ones are just simply there because maybe your people are too injured. So, yeah, like I say, you can hire these black... I'm going to recruit this one. I now have Max. Yeah, you can do a barricade and open fire. I don't know what else he does. That's it. Look, you see, he didn't appear down here. He just exists. So, you have medics over here. These two people are injured. Casimir's is one of my regulars. Apollonius is one of my uh, recruits. Over here, I've got another one. Has different skills, you can see. He's currently got uh, a, a Mauser. Maybe I'll give him the Colt. Yeah, I'll give him the Colt. But as you can see, he comes with different skills. So, each character can only have four skills, each character can have two weapons. It's very important they have different weapons when you're playing because there are three munition types within the game and you take ammo into battle with you, a bit like Darkest Dungeon Supplies. Ammo is required to shoot your gun. There is short ammo, long ammo and heavy ammo. If you run out of rifle ammo, the long, and you only have riflemen, you then have to abandon the mission because you can't actually fight the enemy. But yeah, your character over here, like I have a medic over here, you can level them up because they have special skills, and you have your recruits. Like, it tells me they do things, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't, you know, you can't do anything with them. Why would you care? Now, you can buy buy and sell weapons. This shows what I've got. I've got some weapons in storage. I've got some consumables. I can, rip, I can sell weaponry, as you can see. I can repair weaponry, which is the damage stuff you get, and I can also barter for extra ammunition. I only have 90 supplies, so I probably shouldn't. And obviously over here, heals. This person's a doctor who just got, he doesn't actually do anything too useful. He's just heals, but he doesn't fight. You can't give a weapon. This person over here shows you who's died. You can see it's Monica, who is very useful, and Bojimit, who was not as useful. And over here we have the Codex, which shows you characters, as you can see. These are the five characters I've got currently unlocked. But as you can see, I don't have any of the others. The other guys are just people who join me and die in my line. They don't care. They're not characters. And this is where you pick missions. You can go on excursions to get extra morale, which costs a lot of supplies. Or you can go on missions. So you pick a new mission. It gives you a list of several. Like over here, it's to destroy the Nebelwerfer battery. 
That sounds deathy. Let's do it. You can see morale's going down. If the district gets down to zero, it will surrender. They generate fewer resources as time goes, and war assets slowly start dropping. But as you can see, you want to keep your war assets up, so you need to keep these things in line. If you don't do the mission for that, they get one attrition. You can only pick one battle per time, and how long the mission is is here. This is five days. That's five whole days of the war if I do this one. This one is three whole days of the war, but I have to kill three squads. And this one is retrieve supply crate. We're going to do this one because I might actually survive. Now, as you can see, we're taking in 150 short ammo. I should spend a bit more of that. We're taking in 150 long ammo, and we're only taking in 25 heavy. So, Kamir is too badly injured. So, we're going to bring Frenek, who's one of my named characters, you can tell by all his skills. A Pelusian is just a regular peasant. We've got him, who's our doctor, who's just brought in. So, yeah, Kamir is one of our named. Christoph is also one of our named. We'll bring him in because he's actually very useful. And we're going to bring in Max, because he's also got a rifle. So, we have, let's see, two riflemen, a pistol... Actually, we don't have a medic. Hmm. Two riflemen, two pistols. And we're going to commence the mission. So, how this works is... You'll get random arrows and things showing you around the map. This here is an enemy squad I can fight if I want to. You have AP, or action points, which seems to have given me more of. As you move about, you use up action points. So you have 120 action points to do your mission. Anything else is optional. Look at the bottom. There are eight battles, one event, and five loot. So you can wander around and do stuff. Now, here's obviously a battle. Now, the arrows over here are saying something interesting. Now, if you find a yellow arrow, that's a, a mission. Now, what the game likes screwing you over with, you see how close it was for me to find this? You will find circles around squads. And there'll either be a closed eye or an open eye. An open eye means this squad can see me if I go in the red circle. Even a slightly held down a little bit longer, they would have spotted me. Here's an event. The operation must be stopped, me which engage the enemy. Fresh smoke drifts through the air. Five active moves to a silo, continue with the task at hand. Move in. I could engage this. The approach to the scout looks like a group of nine or ten Nazi soldiers, and you're just in the time. Okay. So your objective against the enemy is not really to fight them, because the enemy squads are quite powerful. Like this one has a flamethrower and a medic. I have fought things before where you're fighting. Oh, critical! Hit them. I've been fighting entire squads where there's six of them. Firing machine guns and rocket launchers and things at you. So the enemy is significantly more powerful than you. Now skills work, if you actually see here. It shows where you need to be standing for them to work. And it also shows what kind of damage they can do. It requires five hammers to fire this, but it can hit everyone. Single shot can only hit the back two ranks. So I'd like... Quite, and if you are in one of the two lanes, the other lane is classed as flanking and does more damage. As you can see, I have two people on the top. Two people on the bottom, the enemy does too. So the bottom row firing at the top row gets flank bonus. Top row firing at the bottom row gets flank bonus. There is also occasionally cover. Cover absorbs damage. So if you have troops behind it, of course, like these two here will take less damage. These two won't. So you can always try to take flanking shots. So you can do more damage while also staying within cover. Oh, he missed me but hit the cover. Good. So yeah, you always want to make sure open fire, it hits everyone. So he doesn't do much damage, because like I say, he's incompetent. But he does, oh, he does do rapid fire though, because he hits multiple targets. So he hits two with this, it requires three. So we're doing better than we usually do, which is good. Because I'd like to actually show you a good game and not just me being instantly killed. Okay, good, two down. And how this works is, every time one of your characters does a attack, it uses stamina. See these little orange bars? That's your stamina. You get one stamina at the end of every turn. But if you go over to the stamina here, it says three stamina to no penalties, two stamina, your accuracy is reduced, one stamina, the damage received is increased. So on one stamina, you take more hits, and no stamina, they can't do anything. 
So you don't really want to use up all your stamina because then you take more damage and hit less. But you have activations. I have four people. I get four activations. I can do four things this turn. The enemy has two people. They get two activations. So they had four turn. No, four goes the last turn because had four people. Now they get two goes this turn because there's two people. We can also move around. I can want to go. I can go over here. It uses stamina though, so everything you really do does stamina. But now he's in a better chance to actually shoot this person in the face. Although he's got crit shot. He's also now let's have a look suppressed, so he can't actually shoot. So you want to shoot that person in the face? So I really want that flamethrower to go away. Ugh. But the enemy gets significantly overpowered. Like right now, they might be able to fix a lot of it. Ah. Okay, you light them up. Yeah, the two people on the front of my name character, two people on the back are just random peasants. Because again, you can't equip them or change anything. If they die, they die permanently. So single shot won't hit them because they're not in the back row. And I can't use this for now. So he's going to... No. You're going to snapshot that guy. Ah! Oh, it grenaded me, but missed. Good. So the enemy is powerful. You don't really want to fight them. But the big activation circles you saw, where I didn't know the enemy was there, means most of the time you wander into them blindly. Trigger happy. No. Keep away. Push him back. There we go. So some skills move you forward. Some skills move you back. Still can't hit him. Yeah, okay. Snapshot him. So you want to try and get the enemy into positions you can actually move. Like hers will move them around. Okay, I need you to heal him. But now she has very little in the way of activation. I mean, in stamina. Uh. Okay. Uh, keep away. Ah. Luckily, he only has one actual activation this turn, so he can keep him away. Still can't hit him with that. Open fire. I'm using up all my munitions, as you can see. So you want to make sure... I should have put him behind the cover. Should have put him behind the cover. There we go. So you want to make sure you have the ammo for the job. So ammunition is very important. They have raised the amount of ammunition you now get during missions, which is very good. Because the first time I played it, you basically ran out of ammo after a couple of battles. So yeah, it's, it feels very much like they're still testing how to make the game work, honestly. And in reality, it should be working already because they released it as a full release game. But it feels very much like they're still testing how things should go. Like I say, ammunition has been dropped. Because like I said, it's already been dropped. So yeah, the enemy does less, uh, has less health now. So there's no things here, I've got to go back down. Careful through the buildings. So the enemy, yeah, there's less enemies, they have less health. They get stuff down here. There's an enemy squad there. Don't have to engage. So yeah, you left click and hold to move about. Okay. There's the crate. So he just appeared out of nowhere. We're already in his territory. See, so, yeah, we found out already inside his territory. If he was looking, I'd have been dead already. Now I have to escape this. And look, another one. Didn't even know he was there. And this is an elite team. There's an SS Grenadier who is very powerful and a German infantry soldier who's quite powerful. Look at this. So this is... Okay, I understand you're meant to be a resistance force and the enemy is more powerful than you. But I'm running into elite troops on like mission 4. I was running into elite troops on mission 2 if I'm bluntly honest. Oh, Piat. I just used all of my heavy ammo doing that shot. Wow, I just used... Really? It says required 5 ammo. Have I used all my heavy ammo with him? Oh, I have used all my heavy ammo with him. Should have been using it with this guy. As you can see, ammo is very, very important. Okay, I'm going to finish off you if I can. 
But you start running into really powerful troops. Like this guy is suppressed and bleeding. Trees, I now have to waste time healing him or I lose him. But I'm not healing as much as they're doing damage. Oh, okay, he's no longer suppressed. Okay, good. I might be able to kill them before they kill me. Uh, too close. Okay. Snapshot this guy's face. Flanking. Bit more damage. Bring him up to my side. Then you can try and shoot him. Ah! Oh. So yeah, your troops have significantly less damage than the enemy. And less health. Oh! Explosive hazard. So you will have a lot of issues. Like I say, these two people at the top, they're not named characters. I can't give them new weaponry. I can't upgrade them as far as I can tell. So they're literally just there to fill out bodies. But you have to make sure, because this guy has very little in the way of stamina now. So he's going to take even more damage. Which means I have to keep him alive. Because you can't really lose soldiers, because you don't have enough soldiers. Because when your soldiers take damage, I'll pull them forwards. When your soldiers take damage, they have to heal it back at base. A bit like, you know, Darkest Dungeon with its um, madness and sanity. Or XCOM with its actual healing. You have to make sure you have troops for the mission. So any time you lose a guy, it's significantly a problem. But again, you can't heal these people. I mean, no, not heal. You can't level up these people, so you don't care. There's only two characters in that entire force, which actually mean something. These are the named guys down below. I can't shoot anything with you. Uh, too close. But you do lose a lot of people. Like, this guy is going to bleed to death now. There he goes. You don't have any ammo? I need to be on the front for him to shoot. Okay, you need to move. Okay, he's dead. I need these two over here to swap over. But yeah, losing people is a major thing for you. Because you don't have that many of them. Oh, he's moved forward at least. And now he's suppressed. You sort of have any... Oh, target acquired you now on the back row so you can shoot. So you have to be in a certain row to fire. Take him. Ah! But yeah, death is significant in this game. You lose a lot of people really quickly. But again, you don't care about most of the people you put in the field. Because, why would you? They're basically nameless... Peons who die for you because they don't have any kind of use. Take him. Like, if this guy dies, I don't know what happens. But I do know you take a lot more damage than the enemy does at times. Yeah, I don't know what happens if a named character dies. I might just let one die to see what happens. Oh, that was a shot and a half. Like, if this kid dies, he dies. I'm kind of curious to see what happens. So I'm not actually healing him or anything, so I want to see what happens with him getting... Oh. Because he's a named character who appears. Another one dead. <laughs> and this was a battle I couldn't escape. Because if you abandon a mission, you abandon the mission. Your troops survive. But you don't get any kind of useful thing. You know, you literally just lose. So you don't really want to abandon it. Because if you do, like I say, you've abandoned it. Which means you've lost. You can't retreat from battles. I can move, I can end activation. But now I'm down to two badly injured people. In a fight I couldn't run away from. 
Yes, there's two bad damaged people in a fight I couldn't run away from, which is a battle I couldn't see. And look, now there's five of them. There's a dog handler, a dog, a medic. So now I have to abandon the mission. See that? Retreating from the battle abandons the mission. But they suddenly open their eye. As you can see, my momentum has gone down. Extra days have been added. My income was pretty useless. And I've lost two people. But how this works, you do a battle, you get an event, the next day happens. So I gain Martin. Welcome aboard, he's probably a new person. He's probably a named character new person. Another 40 odd thousand people are dead. Yeah, so let's have a look around. We've gained Martin, as you can see. He's a named character. You care about this guy. As you can see, named characters pop up. These people I recruit, who actually cares? They both exist. I have them. No one cares they live or die. So there's no real point to recruiting anybody. Because why would you? You can't level them up. They don't exist, really. So the whole recruiting thing is literally useless. Because it just gives you bodies that die, but you can't level up. Now, the named characters, I might just see if one will die and see what happens. I'm kind of curious about that. But yeah, missions are exceedingly tough. Because as you saw, they suddenly opened their eye and I couldn't do anything. I was in the circle. And the other guy who fought me was an elite team, which just caught me. Just caught me. I couldn't retreat from it. It just happened. And if I tried to abandon the fight, I abandoned the mission. Which still gives me the four days the mission took. So, extra time has gone by. War assets are now really bad. Momentum is now down. And people are trusting us less because there's even more attrition. So, I'm failing significantly. So, it feels constantly like this catch up. Like, prevent the AT from disrupting resistance. Let's just deploy team. Let's deploy Fennec. I want to see if he dies, honestly. But it shows you where they're meant to be going. Let's bring Kaminaz. Let's bring you in. No, you're badly injured. Let's bring... Hmm. I don't know. Let's bring Martin in. And let's bring in uh, Jedwiga. Yeah, sure, why not? So the yellow arrows you can see is where I need to go. The other arrows are where things are happening. Now, I love the art style. I love what's going on. These rocket building troops pose significant danger. Go and wipe them out. As you can see, there's an RPG at the back. Now, I have fought it where there was one of these guys, and a flamethrower, and a machine gunner, and a medic, and an officer. So there's a lot of stuff. So yeah, you want to be behind cover at the best of times. But again, I don't, I'm going to see if one of these people will die and just stay dead. Okay. He has a lot more health than the other guys, too. No. He's dead. Now, is he permanently dead? Does he disappear from my heroes and my names? Because like I say, they're the only ones I can level up. So I don't really care about the other people. I don't, I'll be honest, I feel bad shooting dogs in this game. Oh. Oh. But yeah, battles are brutal and tough. Yeah, pull him forwards. That's much better for me. They've got a lot more activations than I do. Light him up. Oh, critical him. But yeah, you, as you can see, actually having these troopers is a bit of a problem because you will take attrition. You will take losses. Your troops will spend several days healing back at base, which isn't good. If you can't replace them with other troops, you're healing and levelling up. If you only have like the named characters, why would you recruit them? And that's what keeps getting to me. I don't get why you have these recruitable characters who are base 40, which are basically useless. They're just literally um, cannon fodder. They're there purely to absorb damage.
Let's put him out into cover. Never mind, he's dead. Oh. Those guys are tough. Heal him up. But yeah, I love how things are going. I'm hoping they patch stuff up because I will come back to this game in the future. Like right now, this is um, day one, patch one. Day one, patch one. This is where we're currently at with this game. So there will be another impression as time goes by. But this is literally day one, patch one. Yes, yes, he's very happy. Now he's even more resilient. Take him out. Oh, you... Did you block him with his gun? He did. See, I like stuff like that. It looks cool. I like stuff like Darkest Dungeon. It's just... It's so unbalanced right now. So unbalanced. That officer needs to dive his behind cover. And that guy is so powerful. So yeah, when it's actually balanced properly, this will be a good game. But it released as a full game. Which means it shouldn't have these kind of balancing issues. It should have been tested. And it doesn't feel like it was tested. Because you definitely know that it wasn't balanced in the slightest. 32. She's dead. Which is why you always need people who don't develop the game to test the game. That's why beta testing is a thing. That's why beta testing is amazingly a thing. Like when all these AAA bloody companies start going, Oh yeah, you should buy our game as a pre-order. You get to do, you get to beta test for us and a beta test. It's not a beta test. A beta test assumes that you're still changing things. But all the actual, you know, features are there. It's not so you can play our game before everyone else. We can get even more money out of you. Beta testing is there to make sure the game is balanced. And this does not feel balanced at all. Pushed him out. She's dead. One of the interesting bugs it had at the very beginning was you couldn't actually delete save games. If you deleted a save game and then played a new game, it just starts up the old save game again. Which I found amusing more than anything. It meant you couldn't ever retreat from your mistakes. Mm. I mean, as you can see, just these two fights have significantly brought down our people. Although, like I say, I'm still kind of curious to see if I have lost them or they're back at base. It says loss is permanent with the recruits. Loss is very permanent, but it's hard to say. He's been pushed. It's been switched. But yeah, I'm running out of ammo. My short ammo, anyway. So you can go anywhere, really. Let's full auto him. There we go. He's down. I forgot he had a Tokarev. Is that Tokarev? I think it's a Tokarev. But yeah, my medic's dead. My my kid's dead. I'm just gonna abandon the mission here. So yeah, once you abandon the fight, you abandon the mission. You can't just retreat. It's meh. So these are dead. Let's see if they're permanently dead. Yeah, the event. Maybe it'll give you another character. Agree. To, okay, chat to uh, leads you face face. Face first, respect of mob judgment. Appear presence of the to round a handful of their Volks grenade. Uh, okay, help the crowd. Seize love his personal belongings. X1 attrition. Ah, they weren't happy with me. More people are dead. So yeah, those characters are permanently dead. 
And again, you can't replace named characters, because, like I say, these three just don't exist. So recruits are used to support from just bringing in bodies for the combat. If your hero, if your named characters die, your named characters are dead. So you want to protect the few named guys by throwing in as many rubbish bodies as you possibly can. Which means recruits are basically nameless, faceless masses. You can't level them up. You don't care. Why would you care? They don't. They can't do anything. Doesn't matter if they fought four or five battles. You can't level them up and make them better. They're still the same useless rubbish you've got further on into the game. So they'll forever be just raw recruits, I guess. No matter how many battles they go through. Whereas the rest of you guys can level up, become slightly more powerful and more useful and so on. But yeah. You always feel like you're on the back foot, which is, I guess is good if you're playing as the Resistance. But you always feel like the game isn't trying to be a game. It's trying to be more of a simulation of what would likely happen, where elite teams of troops would gun you down. It's not currently fun. It's not currently balanced. And it's not currently recommendable. So, yeah, take that as you will. I'll try this game later in the future, but it's not recommended right now. They need to balance it so much. Like, it's like Darkest Dungeon, but they took the wrong... ...lessons to heart. But luckily, they can balance it and patch it to make it that way, but it feels like it wasn't tested. It feels like there's so many things needed to be done. But the art style's amazing, the music is good, the sound is good. The combat, if they actually balance it properly, could be pretty good. I don't know why the recruit system in is in, because it just feels useless. It really does. Like, who gives a crap if your characters... Who, give, who cares? Who cares if your characters can't level up? Because... Uh, you don't care about them, so why should you care about it? But anyway, shout out for the people. Bye-bye.